What is going on guys? My name is Hussein and some of you guys have sent me this beautiful article that I learned so many lessons that I would like to share with you. This is our e attempt to roll out a new chai proxy config and you won't believe what happened next. So it is a little bit of a clickbaity a title as you, as you might have known is like six steps to make you fit. You won't believe number three. You know, uh, we've all been guilty with doing clickbait. So, so let's read through this. This post is a wild discovery made while investigating strange behavior from HA proxy. We dive into the pathology, describe how we found it, and share some investigated technique. I absolutely enjoyed this uh, investigative technique, to be honest. I absolutely love it. Let's jump, because I, I learned so much stuff here. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So the, the background here, I'm, I'm going to summarize exactly what happened here, right? Because... Uh, and I have a little bit of a criticism, Igor, for this, uh, the author of the article. Uh, just, just next time, uh, please use simpler names. Just let's use XYZ. Web-pages01-cfgstabcdefghalmanaki. We don't need all that stuff. We don't know these names. As readers, we don't really care. Just use simple names that we can read. And it will make the config look much better. Thank you. So that's just uh, one criticism. But I absolutely love your article. So <laughs> let's jump into it. So there is a client that connects to a, a Google load balancer on port 443. So this is HTTPS. And there is a TCP proxying all the way to a beautiful backend, right? So there is a this is HA proxy running on this server on port 443. And there is 1443. That's another backend server running on port 1443. Here's the requirement they want to do. They want this backend server to know about this client IP address. And we know in a TCP configuration, when you do a TCP proxying, that is not possible because this guy knows this guy, and this guy knows this guy, and this guy knows this guy. It's, it's just, everything is just a t terminating TCP connections, right? So you might say Hussein, we can just do a uh, layer seven uh, TLS termination and then add a header called x x forwarded by or to whatever for the client. You can do that, but for some reason, GitLabs, which is where they are, this article is written, they don't use a layer seven TLS termination proxy, and we don't know why. Maybe for security reasons. Maybe they don't want. Um, uh, HA proxy to snoop on the content. Only the backend and the client need to know the content. They want an end-to-end -end encryption, essentially, right? Maybe then one way to do it. So there's no way to do it in TCP, except there's this beautiful proxy protocol that HA proxy uh, people invented that allow you to, it's a special uh, layer four, I guess layer four, I don't know if it's layer four pro uh, protocol, but it, it, it has some semantics that allows you to propagate the IP address of this, the client, all the way to the backend. Uh, HA proxy uses this, Envoy uses it, almost all proxies that they want to propagate the IP address all the way to the backend use this program. All right. So we know, okay, we know that we're going to use that. Let's enable it in HA proxy. That's just a, a knob. But the backend has to understand this new protocol that's called proxy version 2, right? So they they said, okay, let's just spin it up, but we will, we, want, we want to keep the old one server running. So let's spin it up on 2443, which is, that's, that's every, sorry, he does this, right? And people do, this is normal, right? You just do this. You have spin up a new thing, and then you change the config to point to this. That's exactly what they did. And they changed the config to point from 1443 to 2443. And they made one typo here, right? One small typo, because I'm, I'm going to spoil the surprise for you guys. What happened here, they changed this, right? But the article goes through, hey, we don't know what happened. Failure started to happen. They, they go through step by step to show exactly, they try to find out, the troubleshoot what exactly went wrong. But, spoiler alert, the traffic, HA proxy started, kept pushing the traffic back to the old server. Despite the configuration has nothing to do with 101443, it's gone. This entry from the configuration is gone. So why are you, as a HA proxy, still forwarding to the backend? There is one typo here that they did here, and we're going to talk about it in a minute. 
so they changed the port, but they didn't change the alias. And that was spoiler alert, right? So we'll, we'll come to that. The brokenness, what happened? Hey, nothing happened, nothing worked. They did a curl. So they did, okay, let's, let's start with curl from the client. Let's do curl dash VVV, which means absolutely nothing. As, uh, as uh, Daniel Stenberg, the author of curl, told us, uh, dash VVV, if you add like a million Vs, it doesn't make anything. It doesn't make any sense. You can just do dash V. There is no V, 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 doesn't add verboseness. Dash V, it's just, I think, there's this misconception that people just propagated, right? And uh, I think I'll, I'll share the tweet. <laughs> so dash V is enough. But yeah, uh, the TCP is done, and but the client hello is failing with this weird error. Because the, the short, long story short is the HA proxy is trying to communicate in proxy version 2 with an old backend, with 1443, which doesn't understand that protocol. And it's just, it's freaking out left and right. So they say, okay, they, they didn't know, or they, they didn't get much information. They dive deep and they use this tool that I didn't know, that I never used before. It's called TCP dump. And think of it like, a, like a, as a fiddler, but for TCP packets. Just like Wireshark, but it's like easier to use. So it's like, yeah. Show me everything that's going on with this app, which is beautiful. So I love this a lot. All right. So long story short, they didn't see any po any traffic to 2443, which is the brand new proxy backend version two. They want uh, nothing. Nothing's going on. The the clients just this the HA proxy is immediately closing the connection. What's going on? They had some hypothesis. They went to know, but they even. Igor even ran it locally, it ran it on his own machine, and it works. It's only on this particular backend, HA proxy is not working. Why? And by the way, they, they don't mention this, but they actually restart HA proxy and stop and restart it, and it's not working. It's not like they want to change the config while HA proxy is not running. No, it's just not working. HA proxy is, is still pointing to the old backend. Digging deep, they brought up the expert Matt Smiley, and uh, they they fired up uh, uh, Wireshark, and look at that. Here's the back end. Here's the HA proxy connecting to the back end, which is the old back end, as we see. There's a TCP sense an ACK, and then he's doing a push. What is HA proxy saying? HA proxy saying, "Screw you, quit." <laughs> and this is. Uh, you're gonna find out at the end of the article that they find out after a long search in the in the spec, which they did a lot of research. I I totally feel them because I spent days and days in bugs like this, right? Not specifically to proxies, but just like with caching and, and stuff like stale caching, nasty caches, and running processes. Like, ugh, cache invalidation is the worst. All right, so yeah. Uh, it's like, okay, where is quit coming from? We're going to come to that. But they say, all right, we need, and here's my favorite part in the article. There is this thing that's called open snoop. They, what, they, what they wanted to do is like, okay, HA proxy is doing some shady stuff, and we need to get to the bottom of it. What HA proxy is reading that has the value 143? We, we want to know, because it's definitely the config doesn't have it. So they did a, a snoop on it, and this is brilliant. You run this beautiful command, and it tells you, hey, this thing is reading from these files. Look at that. <laughs> it's reading from this file. And all of a sudden, they look, okay, oh, they did, a, they did a cat on this, and all of a sudden, look at that. It is pointing to the old file. So this is, and I, I didn't know about this thing. This is apparently a state, a global state that you can save and it trumps everything else you do. Once you have this global state, it's just like, hey, I don't care what you do with my, with my other config. If you have a server name called this, I am gonna override this configuration that I have. And somehow they got this config, right? And when they looked at the config, their config, sure enough, they actually enabled them themselves. Now, this is back to my point that I always scream in, in, in all my videos, do not put lines of config that you don't understand. Only put the stuff that you absolutely need, right? And that's why in all my videos, I made, I don't know, over 10 videos over HA, on HA proxy 
alone, not to mention Nginx and Envoy and traffic, and I always start from blank slate. I never, never, ever copy and paste because every line that I write, I know what it does. And apparently, they th this is might be what HA proxy recommend as the default. Who knows? But it's not. I, I know some people would disagree with that, but it's not me. I just don't copy and paste config. And looks like this is what they had. I, I'm not sure. This is what I, I think because they, they say hey, we, uh, looks like we're using that. They didn't know. Apparently, they didn't know that they had that, right? Otherwise, someone should have known. But that, this will persist the state across HA proxy restarts, and this is essentially, yeah, well, no matter what you, rest, you start, you change the config, it doesn't matter. The state will persist. So what happened here is uh, the HA proxy was reading the config, but it was overwritten by the state. So what did they save? What did they fix? <laughs> just, just give it another name. Does it? Just give the alias right you change the port but you keep the alias because that's what HA proxy does right you, you get, it's like server you can alias it and then you give the actual physical ip address or host and port what they did is like they changed the port so it's a completely different server but they kept this so it's always a best practice to change this as well okay this is a complete server name different server name so if there is like references treat this as a new entry so that's to me, that's essentially the best solution, right? The better solution is that if you don't need that global state thing, maybe remove it, because I didn't see a use for it. And I, to be honest, I didn't even understand what it does. It's like, why? Why, are we, why, why would I, again, I might be missing something. Even when I read this, when I read the, the server state file here, yeah, I read this, but I didn't understand anything. So I'm gonna ask uh, my HA proxy contact on the use case of using this because I, I, I to be honest i don't understand what why do we have this feature because like why would i keep uh, yeah why why would i keep this across restarts it says for maintenance but what, what maintenance why would i if i'm going to maintain something i'm maybe maybe hey don't touch this but why would why wouldn't this be in the config itself just like hey, like another parameter say hey dash dash maintenance or whatever i don't know all right so <laughs> final thing here is just like they say okay where's this quit coming from like why is HA proxy actually sending a quit they the, the, they did search the specs like okay is, is HA proxy sending a quit message apparently it does but they couldn't find the string quit in the protocol <laughs> But they found the bytes, which actually, if you translate it, is actually exactly the thing, the same thing, which is the quit protocol. And uh, what happens here is like, hey, that means you are talking with an old protocol and I cannot, it's not backward compatible, essentially. That's what I understood, looks like. But what we learned from this, guys, is, first of all, troubleshooting is the best skill that you can have. Like have all these beautiful tools in your swiss army knife and try to just play with all possible solutions to get to the bottom of things could uh, could they, they probably could have if they if they understood all the config they could have immediately found it right because it's not like a huge config right well it is a huge but every if you understand everything like okay there's there's a file here what is it what does it do right they could have gotten to the problem better but essentially the tools that just don't focus on the actual problem itself focus on the on the the path on the journey they took to get to the bottom of this i think it's it's a really really interesting uh, way of solving the problem and then i think uh, this is definitely there's a thing or two to learn from this and guys what do you think about this I'm going to see you on the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye, y'all.